Hello, Bob Lemin for LCTV, back again in historic Chad's Ford. Today we're in the third floor gallery with exhibit curator Audrey Lewis looking at the American visionary artist Joseph Stella. We're in front of a painting from 1931, and I'll let Audrey talk about this colorful, charismatic, but little known American painter, yeah. Joseph Stella. Happy to do that. So Joseph Stella um, was really well known in his own day for his paintings of the Brooklyn Bridge, which was um, you know, considered a mar modern marvel at the time of this painting. Um, he was born in 1877 in Mur Murano, Italy, which is southern Italy. Came to the United States in 1870, I mean 1897, and um, was living with his brother and going to medical school for a short time. Um, before he was able to finally turn his attention to art full time. Um, and so he went back to Italy in 1909. He was, discovered all the great modernists like Picasso and um, Matisse, and he his art changed from that point on to more modernist avant-garde style, um, including the, um, the subjects of the Brooklyn Bridge and Coney Island. But something happened to him in 1919 where which really changed his trajectory towards nature as his major subject. Uh, nature being uh, what was surrounding him in New York at the Botanical Gardens and in Italy that he returned to many, many times, and also to um, uh, other European cities and to uh, Barbados and uh, North Africa. So he traveled frequently, and nature was his inspiration. Uh, this painting was painted in 1931, and it was called, it's called Flowers Italy. Um, it's a remarkable painting, not only because of its size and its colors, but it, it, so many different flowers, and not all of them from Italy, to, to be perfectly honest. Um, and that was, that was fine. Um, this almost looks like a, a church, and he had this Catholic upbringing, uh, so we do see references to that throughout his career. Uh, but this one in particular has, has arches, and it has um, this sense of um, a crucifix even um, in the, at the center. And in the, begin in the front, uh, we see all these flowers gathered as if they're uh, congregants in, in the church. So uh, there's a lot of wonderful work going on, and there's lots of wonderful imagery in this painting um, that you could explore for hours and hours. Right. Would you say Stella was considered a, a futurist artist? Um, modernist or? who was influenced by Italian futurism. Okay. So that was a movement in Italy that spread to also to uh, Paris. And, and I know he went to art school in New York at the did. Art Students League, and yeah. he was primarily based in New York. Yes, I would say that's true. For most um, of his career. He studied in 1903 with um, William Merritt Chase, who was um, an Impressionist painter, uh, and he, uh, Stella, uh, went from there to illustration for a while. And then when 1909, when he went, went to Italy, to return to Italy for a visit, he was there for several years, and that's when he was introduced to really avant-garde art um, in Paris, the Italian futurists, Cubists, uh, Fauvism, all of the movements that were happening in Paris in the, um, around 1911 and 1912. Great, and it's nice to welcome this uh, American painter back into the museum seen. There hasn't been a major Stella show since the Whitney did one back, I think, circa 1990. 1994, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was Great. a huge, huge show. That was mm -hmm. his whole career. So this, this show is different in that it's just focused on the nature paintings. Uh, and, but they were the dominant subject for most of his career. Okay. So we were so excited to be able to focus on that and to bring Joseph Stella back into the public eye with loans from all over the country, uh, private collections, museum collections. Uh, and so um, we have 84 works in this exhibition. It's on okay. two floors. Oh, one, two. Yeah, I know. yeah there's a, a second right. floor, so. Okay, um, yeah. let's get started. <laughs> and we're here in front of a monumental painting from 1929, dubbed Red Flowers. It has a, a spiritual quality about it, and I'll let Audrey uh, shed some light on this mysterious uh, image by yes. uh, Joseph Stella. Yes, yeah, so this is painted in 1929 when um, 
Stella was in Paris for one of his many visits overseas from New York. And it portrays uh, this, obviously, this beautiful red amaryllis uh, surrounded by uh, plants and flanked by these two wonderful peacocks. Um, peacocks representing uh, just nature for Stella. Uh, he did paint peacocks in the past. Um, birds were one of his favorite subjects, always in conjunction with um, flowers or, or plants. And uh, peacocks were actually becoming popular in the United States at this time. Uh, there were peacocks at the Bronx Zoo. Um, I'm sure they were also in uh, zoos in uh, Europe. Uh, but uh, he just has these peacocks uh, acting almost like angels uh, flanking Christ or the Madonna figure. Right. And uh, we do see that Stella uh, returned to similar subjects, um, or motifs, I should say, really, because he, uh, he painted the Madonna in several uh, series of paintings. But this is 1929, and what's also interesting is that the palette, his palette, his color palette, the colors that he's choosing are a little bit darker than what you would see in some of his other work. Uh, he had gone to North Africa in the late 20s, early 30s, and uh, somehow his palette changed in, mm -hmm. that, in that period. Uh, still very bold and bright, uh, but with a little bit deepening of, um, the, pa of the colors. Mm -hmm. Would you say there's some stained glass windows in the background? I would say that that is definitely the effect that he is um, evoking. Uh, similar to Flowers Italy, that has that stained glass appeal. Uh, I think that this is also too, but, but they're, they're plants that can't be identified uh, by me, at least. They, he, mm -hmm. he takes true observation of, of, of nature, and then he transforms it into something um, more visionary and fantastic, mm -hmm. or fantasy-driven. Right. Wow. I wonder if he painted listening to music. You know, I think he did. I think uh, music was a uh, part of his uh, whole inspiration and development yeah. while, he, while he was working. Yeah. Uh, some of his paintings have uh, musical titles. Okay. Uh, and he, and he, he wrote prolifically about his work, and he does mention music in, oh, in that um, as part yeah. of his inspiration. Wow. Along with poetry, uh, he was a fan of Walt Whitman and Edgar Allan mm -hmm. Poe uh, also. Wonderful. So he had, even though he was born in Italy and grew up mm -hmm. there, he had these um, influences from uh, the United States early on. How did he come up with his name? He changed his name, didn't he, to, to Joseph Stella? Um, I don't think that was his No, so name. it was uh, Giuseppe okay. Stella. And you know, oh. I, I don't know, I've never thought oh. about that, okay. how it became yeah. Americanized. Yeah. Uh, probably happened really early on because or his maybe, work is signed. Maybe when he had to go to art school. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, his brother was Antonio, oh, wow. and he remained known as Antonio, but maybe Joseph Stella thought yeah. that was a simpler way to uh, be recognized. Okay. And now we're looking at an early self-portrait, circa 1900, of uh, American artist Joseph Stella. And I'll let Audrey interpret uh, some thoughts behind this work. Yeah. So this is um, one of the earliest works in the exhibition. And it's a self-portrait Joseph Stella did about 1900, 1903, after he was studying with an American uh, t t teacher uh, named uh, William Mart Chase. William Art Chase was a very popular artist. He was a popular teacher. He was very influential as a, as a teacher as well as a painter. And so Stella studied with him a few years. And this was uh, very much in the style of William Art Chase in terms of um, the lighting, the, the shadows, and the uh, tonality. Uh, very quick brush strokes, rapid brush strokes. But you can see uh, throughout the show how this style changed so, so rapidly. and, ch and um, very quickly, right. but not only that, but yeah, really transformed the way he looked at art uh, right. later. And then behind Audrey, there's some very early works, which we can maybe pan down to, to see. Um. Yeah, this is 1900 as well. This is called Bark, and it is oil on paper, uh, but it has the feel almost of a, um, an illusionistic uh, painting. Uh, but it does show his early interest in nature was there before he really embraced it as his dominant subject. Okay.
we're standing in front of a water lily from the 1920s uh, with kind of a curious format, a frame within a frame. And uh, I'll let Audrey take it from here. So this is a painting of, on, in oil on glass, which is something that uh, Stella started um, experimenting with in the 1920s. Uh, he had befriended uh, Marcel Duchamp, who was one of the early um, what we call Dadaists. It was a da movement called Dadaism, in which um, Duchamp and his um, fellow Dadaists uh, re rejected uh, technology and, mo and everything of the past. So they were embracing modernism. Uh, so Stella started working in glass, because, partly because Marcel Duchamp was. Mm -hmm. And he's painted a number of these works, uh, flowers on glass. This one is still so vibrant in color. And I think uh, partly is because it's, it's like a reverse painting on glass. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the colors are so luminous. Um, as for the shape, I, I've seen other paintings of his on glass, and they all have unusual shapes. So I don't know whether that was just his personal preference yeah. to create uh, a sense of uh, asymmetry or, or what exactly it was. But it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's one of my favorites in yeah. the show. That must have been more work for the framer. Yeah, I would think so. And this is a, a private collection yeah. work. So, wow, great. yes, because when I first saw this, I only saw the, angu the a angular with, before it was put into a, a 90 degree type of frame. Okay. So, I wow. think it, it, they did a good job. Yeah, yeah, it looks, it looks so vibrant and hard yeah. to believe it's 100 years old, yeah. painted 100 years ago. Okay, in front of another great painting from the late 20s, Neapolitan Song, a very serene painting with maybe a smoldering volcano in the background and a, kind of a futuristic fantasy type image from, from Stella. And uh, Audrey, what, what can you tell us about this curious uh, creation? So this was painted after Stella returned to Italy in the 1920s uh, for one of his many trips. Uh, this was a trip that he took beginning in 1922 after the war, and he traveled throughout Italy. His birthplace, Mur Lacano, was a mountain town in the south of Italy, not far away from Vesuvius, which is what wow. you see in this painting. It often appears in his work. It's kind of a, a touchstone wow. okay. uh, for his uh, birthplace, and a place that he went back to over and over again, and he uh, even wrote about it as, um, you know, even though he lived in New York, he felt um, a home in Italy. That was his Latin character. He said that he never lost that. Uh, so this is a, a perfect painting representing the Italian landscape, stylized or I would say modernized in, in a sense. Um, and so you see uh, these wonderful elements like the palm tree open and, and one closed. And it, you, you can, you, obviously it's transformed from what it would look like in nature. Uh, to something that is uh, more of a fantasy of, of the landscape. Um, he often included swans and birds. And so you see this peculiar but fascinating uh, combination of all of these elements that wouldn't exist necessarily in nature, in the real world, um, but certainly in uh, uh, Stella's world, it did. Yeah, yeah. Stella's world, that's a good, good description. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. We're in front of another one of Stella's efforts from uh, the old country, uh, The Virgin from 1926. Rather a serene scene with a calla lily and a the, uh, symbolic volcano in the, in the background. And uh, I'll let Audrey uh, take it away. Uh, there's a lot to talk about in this image. So, so, so when Stella returned to Italy in the 1920s, he did a series of uh, paintings of Madonna, the Madonna in um, nature. And as you can see in this painting, uh, she's surrounded by flowers and, and fruit. And similarly to what would happen in, in Italy on procession, uh, processions on holy days, uh, the village or the town would uh, carry an icon of the Virgin or a statue and process through the town. And this is I think, that what inspires him in this series of paintings. Um, it was not a subject that was painting in, painted in the United States very often at this, at this time. Uh, and he did paint them while he was in Italy. Um, 
And a lot of them are, there's probably six of them in total. Uh, we have three here. Uh, he, some of these stayed in his family uh, until after his death. So we're not sure whether they sold very easily because the subject wasn't popular in the United States, but, but it was shown in Italy in an exhibition, um, a national exhibition, and uh, received very uh, well. Uh, it was just a subject that wasn't so popular with uh, collectors or museums in, in, um, in the United States. Uh, but you can see she's surrounded, um, again, she's in front of the uh, Vesuvius and the background of, of Naples, and she uh, has this wonderful figure uh, worshiping her or, or, or uh, adoring her. Uh, this is often um, a subject in, in Italian Renaissance painting, uh, the Madonna surrounded by worshipers or people praying to her. Uh, and uh, the fruit is all very much uh, Italian um, inspired. And we see the flowers in several stages, which I think is really fascinating with him. Uh, you see this flower you know, closed up, and then it opens, and then uh, it will sometimes it will close again in, in some of, of his work. Uh, but I guess representing uh, sta the stage of um, stages of life. Right. And uh, you had these beautiful birds as well. So it's, it's still very vibrant. And, and this period, I think his color palette is uh, as bright as it ever was mm -hmm. in his career. It's amazing the way he uh, depicts the hair, just the kind of golden yeah. shimmering hair. Yeah, just visible. Right. And her neck is so long and elegant. And, right. uh, and he was, of course, um, he was Italian. He grew up in a, in a Catholic environment, sure. although I would say that he wasn't really religious, at least not in his writing. He did not refer to religion other than as related to his paintings, um, you know, being inspired by the colors of the sky in Italy and um, these subjects that were arose, um, religious and mythological. Wow, great. And we're in front of another Stella from 1928, again, uh, European inspiration, uh, perhaps a, a scene from Italy uh, with the kind of the symbolic uh, moon perhaps. Uh, uh, as you walk through the gallery, you can, you can kind of feel whispers of George O'Keefe and uh, I think Arthur Dove and the, st the whispers of the Seaglitz Circle. Yeah. So uh, did Stella know those painters when he was in New York? Yeah, so he was part of another, there was a Seaglitz Circle, which included Dove and O'Keefe. And then there was another circle, uh, Walter Arensberg uh, Circle, which was um, Duchamp. Okay. and Stella and others. But they knew each other's work very well. Uh, Stella uh, was asked about being inspired by George O'Keefe, and she was asked about being inspired by him. Okay. And they both more or less said that we were working parallel, but not really being uh, influenced by each other's work. Mm -hmm. But uh, Stella, uh, you have to remember, um, or you have to know, he was very reluctant to give credence to any uh, type of inspiration other than nature yeah. and his own imagination. Okay. Um, but definitely there's a dove uh, feeling to this painting with the, with the moon in the background and uh, the, the sky. And so I think that there's, there's definitely parallels to be found sure. in these artists who are using, really stylizing or simplifying uh, to uh, almost a symbolic um, nature of the, uh, of the landscape. Right. Yeah, there's a serenity and austerity that I think echoes across yeah. all the artists. Okay. Stella did not only travel to Europe, he spent time in Barbados, and he reunited with his wife near the end of his life. Stella died in 1946. Here's a painting from 1940 that Audrey's going to talk about. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Stella had married May Gerald in French um, about 1906. They had met in William Art Chase's um, art class. But they were separated or lived apart for many years until they were uh, kind of reunited in 1935, or the mid-30s. Uh, why they were separated is unknown, uh, but they were definitely apart. I know that she was in Philadelphia in, um, in the 1920s working as a dressmaker. Uh, but needless to say, um, 
they were apart. And she was very ill in mid-30s. She had diabetes. And she wanted to go back to her birthplace of Barbados uh, to essentially die. Uh, and so they went together in uh, 1937, late in the year. And he spent uh, about six months in, um, in Barbados. And out of that came these beautiful works, uh, very much inspired by the, the light and color of Barbados and this wonderful uh, sense of, um, of rejuvenation um, happened with Stella. He said that this island and this, the beauty of the people and the trees all helped revive his spirits after a time of, uh, during the Depression, when he was not really doing very well sales-wise and his work was uh, being forgotten to some degree. So Barbados was a, a great point in his uh, late career, um, where, in which he was able to um, rediscover himself mm -hmm. in a way. This was painted in 1940, so probably once, it was painted once he got back to the United States. Oh. So it was a subject that um, went beyond his time in Barbados. Okay. We're in front of a work from 1919 that's described on the wall as being a silver point. So the obvious question is, Audrey, what, what makes up a silver point work on paper? Yes. So silver point is a medium that's uh, very essentially drawing, uh, but with silver. Uh, it's, you have a silver rod that um, you insert into a pencil type case, um, a stylus it's called. So then the artist will cover the paper with a uh, substance such as gesso or paint um, to create a surface that they can uh, sort of uh, carve into with that silver point. Uh, and they dig into it a little bit. It's very unforgiving medium. I mean, you make a mistake, uh, you have to start over. But it's a beautiful medium. And the, the Italian Renaissance artists were the ones that uh, first worked in silver point. And um, Stella became interested in that medium around 1918, 1917. Uh, he was looking back at the old masters, as we call them, uh, and looking for inspiration. Uh, he and other artists of the um, 20th century uh, sort of created a revival of, the, of Silver Point, uh, in, including not only uh, Stella, but Marcel, Marcel Duchamp, and also um, Marston Hartley. And that medium uh, creates this very delicate uh, kind of treatment of the, of, a, of the subject. So in this case, he's combined flowers again. There's this lovely little hummingbird at the very edge of the paper, uh, also not fully finished, I think, in, on purpose that. So it, it creates this very elegant, uh, lyrical uh, rendition of, of, of plants and flowers. And he combined flowers here, too, um, in, a, in a way that they, they would not occur in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a medium that he embraced for his whole career uh, in, up until his death, really. So Silver Point is an ongoing uh, love of his. And, and he, it, it's so different than his other work that was so bold in oil and color and paint. Um, in, in this medium, he used crayon to color the surface. And so um, you have this really acutely observed uh, drawings of these subjects, but not scientific in the sense that they are, are only due to observation. Mm -hmm. Wow. So more of the artist's personal interpretation with, than with, a botanical study. Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. Bob Lemin for LCTV. Uh, Concluding the tour of the uh, colorful and imaginative walk through Joseph Stella's life here at Brandywine Wine River Museum of Art. The show continues uh, in the summer of 2023, and I'll let curator Audrey Lewis have the last word yeah. on Joseph Stella. Thank you, Audrey. Yeah, thank you. So this exhibition uh, has been in preparation for the last four years, and so we're just so thrilled that it's finally come to the Brandywine. And I think people will respond so well to the show, partly because I mean, the museum itself is surrounded by beautiful nature. And the exhibition certainly um, amplifies that to some degree with this beautiful, bold, and vibrant paintings that um, are so uh, inspiring and, and inspired by nature uh, to Joseph Stella. 
and uh, people have been very positive about the exhibition. Uh, most people saying that they never expected to see such uh, vibrant work uh, in, of paintings of flowers and, and of uh, birds and trees and everything that uh, Joseph Stell loved um, to paint. Right. Yeah, he was a man of many talents. And I want to invite all our viewers in Lancaster to check out this exciting show at the Brandywine Museum. And uh, once again, thanks to Audrey and the, and the staff here in Chadsford. For LCTV, I'm Bob Lemin. Thank you.